Yes, so that my father, was, my father used to tell me that he, that he thought Lady Bird was really the, the person who kept Johnson together and, and kept, kept him within the, the channels of his strength. And, and uh, it, it meant taking, I think, probably uh, good-naturedly some abuse and, and uh, some neglect. But she, she was strong enough to do all that and determined enough. And of course, adored him and he adored her. It was very clear. He, he, he could fly off the handle at times, and, and um, that's, uh, that's in the nature of things. Uh, but the two together made it a big force. The, the, their co combination was stronger than the, any single one. Um, what well, they say, the total is greater than the sum of its parts. That's it. That's true, the Johnson couple. I think uh, we, it, one thing that a, I, I've, I notice about the Johnson team, they're so loyal, all the fellows that worked for him, you know, Jack Valenti and Harry McPherson, to name two, uh, they, uh, they, uh, they, they saw the flaws, they saw the, the, the problems, but they recognized the greatness. And they were proud and thrilled to be part of it, and they were a big part of it. There were many others, of course, Califano and so forth. I think, I, think, I think, you know, Bill Moyers was a strong thing. I think it, it, uh, Bill changed on the war a little bit, and I think the president noticed that, and, and probably that came between them at some point. I remember one time I was sitting in the back of the car with the president, and Bill was in the front seat, and, and out, of, out of the blue, the president observed, Bill, your hair's getting long, isn't it? And I, why in the world would he say such a thing? But I think that was about the time, you know, when when the uh, Vietnam thing was beginning to split the two men. And Bill's had a great career since then. He's doing fine. He's got wonderful TV stuff going. Harry, of course, is uh, Washington's, I think, most effective lawyer lobbyist. He's a, but he's more than that. He's really a statesman without portfolio, a terrific guy. Lenny never quits. In fact, he's giving, he's written a book now about how to give speeches, and, and he does, he loves to rattle on, and he's good at it, and, um, and he's a, such a charming guy. And I don't see much of Joe anymore, She's, he's in New York, and, but he's a, a loyal supporter and full of good ideas. So I think all in all, uh, the experience for me was, uh, was I feel very lucky. I think uh, it, I saw a slice of history from that perspective that taught me a lot about people and country, world. Um, people used to kid what the protocol is just meeting and greeting. And then I thought to myself, yeah, what more important event in a human life is there than meeting another one? And what more important aspect of that is, is than the greeting, in effect, the context in which you do this so that you can come away feeling it was useful and that we can go forward with more hope. So that's what I would hope for every president, to, to, to have that uh, attitude. And I think, you know, our current president's doing his best along those lines. And, and um, every president, uh, I, I've, that office is, is so overwhelming in, in, in its demands that it just takes your breath away when you, when you step back and think about how does anybody ever do the darn thing? Think of all the times, the, the days that you spend when you're on the phone writing letters and, and interrupted, boom, boom, because of the, the life that you are leading and the work you have to do. Multiply that 10,000 fold and see what the, the uh, impingement on the president's time and attention and, and uh, patience has to be. Uh, Johnson handled these things very well. Uh, I never uh, saw Kennedy that much in that context, of course, because I, I wasn't that close there. He was the other president that I worked under. If you accept the fact that when I was a private in the Marines, Truman was present, but I didn't see a lot of him. <laughs> then 
And then when I went in the Foreign Service, Eisenhower was president. But there you are, they were all good men. I think I've probably wound myself down. I know I've forgotten some things I wanted to tell you. Well, we can always catch us some other time. Could we ever do that again? Yeah, because I know there's something in the back of my mind the, uh, that I wanted to tell you. Well, well, one more thing. I, I remember um, when we went on the trip to the Manila Conference, 1966, I think. Yeah. Um, Seven Nation Summit Conference, you know. And I went on the advance. It took us about... Uh, 10 or 15 days, and then I got here for 24 hours, got back on the plane with the president, went again. So it was quite a grind. Moyers was in charge of our advance. And when we went to Wellington, uh, New Zealand, uh, we went to the, I went to the guy that, sort of the hotel master of the, of the uh, city and said, we, we need a a hotel suite for President Johnson. I'm sorry, there's nothing. Excuse me, uh, the, the President of the United States is, is coming to visit your, your country. You're telling me that, uh, that there's no hotel space. And the reason we're asking for this, by the way, which I didn't share with him, the President said, I don't want to stay in anybody's home. I don't like to mess around people's home and Secret Service come and punch his hole in the wall and everything. I'm just not going to do it. I'm, I'm, it's not right. And I'm, you're going to get me public accommodation wherever we go. So that's, that was my mandate. So uh, I said, so the President's coming and you can't, you can't work him in. And he said, uh, no, uh, pray not. And I said, could I know why? Oh, yes, he said, it's race week. It's race week. Meaning that the race is in <laughs> all the hotel rooms are taken. See? So I had to go back. Well, no. Then I went to call on Sir Bernard Ferguson, who was the Governor General of uh, New Zealand. The Governor General is the Englishman that they, they send in to a colony, and uh, or I guess it's, they call it something else now, um, to, to pr represent the Queen. He has no power in that country, but he's the Queen's representative, and she's the head of state. So, Bernard Ferguson, I, I, met, I walked into this enormous living room in this palatial house where he lived, and there's a portrait of him on the wall. He's about 10 feet tall. He's wearing a red uniform of a British hussar or something. And apparently he'd been, in the, he'd been at uh, Tobruk at one time when, you know, Tobruk went back and forth between the Germans and the Brits for quite a few times. And, and so he was uh, trapped in Tobruk once with his troops and the Australians um, relieved the siege and he came out the head of his troops wearing a monocle and the Aussies all laughed at him and so he took it out of his eye and flipped it in the air and caught it. He must have practiced that damn thing a thousand times. Anyway, excuse me, the, the, anyway, <laughs> he caught it. So of course he became a big hero to everybody. Well, that's the kind of guy he was. He was big, bluff, and determined. So he came into the room looking exactly like his portrait. Oh, Mr. Simon, jolly good to see you. Lady Ferguson and I are thrilled to know the president will be staying with us. I said, well, uh, uh, your lordship, um, the president is so grateful that you would be thinking along those lines. Actually, I said, he has always instructed us to find a public accommodation because he doesn't like to impose on a private home in any way, shape, or form. Well, that's quite impossible, I'm afraid. No, the Queen wouldn't like it. So, uh, it, 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 that's that, you see. So I went back and I said to Moyers, we have a problem. Uh, uh, the, Sir Bernard Ferguson expects the President. You didn't tell him? You didn't tell him the President <clears throat> not going to stay in a private home? I said, no. I, I, well, I, Bill, I, I tried to explain to him that the, the President and you didn't stick to it, did you? Send a boy to do a man's job. All right, I'm going. I said, fine. So I took Bill Moyers <clears throat> in to see Sir Bernard Ferguson. We walked into the same room, saw the great portrait. In comes Ferguson. Mr. Moyers, get down, jolly good to see you. And how thrilled Lady Ferguson and I are to know the president will be staying with us. And Moyers said, well, the president is rather pleased himself. <laughs> so, so we walked out of there and said, boy, you're tough, Bill. You really took him on.
But they was the kind of guy you couldn't uh, say no. And so then, of course, we had to deal with the actual arrival of the president. I was a little nervous because he said, I don't want to do this. <coughs> he, we drive up, and the president, Sir Bernard Ferguson comes out of the house, you know. Mr. President, come on in here. And there was a little room uh, that people would take off their, clo uh, their, their coats and before going into a reception, you know. And he said, Mr. President, <coughs> I call this the sheep dip. Well, of course, that one is hard. And he thought that was the funniest thing. The next thing you know, they're having a great time. And, they, and Lady Bird, and of course, Lady Ferguson. Th th it, it worked out just perfectly. Th there were times when you did, um, okay, one more thing. You, My secretary's you, now pulling me up. You put the rest of us in that damn <laughs> ferry boat. Uh-oh. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, that's oh, that was awful. Well, I didn't know where to go, where you guys were going to go. And then, God, that was just terrible. Uh, I didn't even learn about Hillary. When we went to Sydney, one more thing, Sydney, the 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 the, the finest people of Sydney, about three hundred, were gathered in a room uh, to meet the president. And he was about an hour or two late. He'd been doing things, and he turned to me and he said, "Do I have to go in there?" Oh. No, first he turned to uh, Marvin Watson. He said, Marvin, well, I gotta go in there. And he said, no sir, you're the President of the United States and you go do anything you like. And he turned to me and said, what do you say? Mr. President, these people have been waiting now for about two hours. And they're the finest people of the Sydney society and they're anxious to see you. And it would be uh, sad and perhaps unfortunate if, if you didn't uh, take advantage of this opportunity. So he said, um, he looked at me like, I'm going to get you. And he went in and, whoa, Mr. President, great. And a cheer went up in the room. And next thing you know, he's working his way through that room, shaking every single hand. And he comes out the other end, the finest people I ever met in my life. Why the greatest thing I ever did. So you see, you, you couldn't always depend on his mood. Because, uh, and, you, and he was perfectly, he loved people. I think I'm being taken now by old way. But I'll, uh, this was fun, and I hope uh, we can do this again, Bob. Great. Yeah, yeah, this was great. I wish I did. No, th th I've got to go to... Um